All right, so today we're talking about chapter four, logging and monitor monitoring. Um, I pulled out these three learning objectives, but um, the first one, I don't think he covered that well. Um, and so I actually left a comment to him about that. So the first thing is differentiate between logs and metrics. What are logs and metrics? What is what is monitoring? And actually, he, we go back and forth between metrics and monitoring in the chapter. Um, and then we're going to spend a lot of time looking at how to log events from your code using the log for our package. Um, and then we're going to touch on uh, some open source options for emitting metrics for, for the monitoring half of the chapter. I don't plan to dig into that very deep because he didn't. Um, but I do think, like, you know, I recommended that he, because um, he, had, I, I don't know, um, you know, if or when you've read the chapters, but he's got notes in there now for us. And I think that's really uh, cool <laughs> that he's like, you know, note to readers, but he means us um, asking, you know, would you like more coverage or whatever? And I told him, yes, you know, I'd like to see a demo of this uh, package, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So um, oops, let's click there. Um, the main, like like I said, he doesn't actually define this. Um, he kind of talks around it, but the idea is that logs are like events as they're happening. Like as some as you're running your app, uh, you might want to log that someone logged in or log that someone loaded a certain visualization or different things like that versus metrics are uh, measurements of how things are working. Um, like examples that I know of that I've used would be like um, CPU utilization or um, you know how much RAM is being used or, but then you can also have things like uh, model accuracy would be a metric that you might wanna be um, updating as things change on a model or, um, I'm not sure what else. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts about anything else on the, like the differentiation between logs and metrics? All right. So then <laughs> this might be a very short one, but so the main thing, like the thing that he covered the most is this log for R package um, and how to actually log things. Uh, it took me a minute of, okay, what is the difference between I'm sending these things to the console. Um, like you can send from log for r to a file, but the examples he's showing are all going to the console. I'm like, well, that's already in R. You know, you can send messages, you can send warnings, you can send errors. Um, really, it's kind of in the amount of structure, and then also a log for r error isn't an r error. <laughs> like it is telling you that it's an error, but it doesn't stop the code. Like if you have a shiny app and you say, hey, this is an error, but you could catch it and it doesn't actually necessarily kill the shiny app. Um, and then in between there's this package CLI that the tidyverse team, um, actually, I think they develop it and they use it in their error reports that has some of the structure kind of like log for R or it's made for making structure, but it's made for interactive use, like the kind of errors that you want while you're working with with a package, uh, that kind of messaging. So um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of dive into that because I, I wrote a ticket for our book club app. It's like, oh, I need to add logging. And then I had to pause. I'm like, wait, why, why use this log for our thing versus using uh, CLI? It's because it's made to be the structure of a log file. So I've got some examples here. This is using um, the same kind of thing that he did where uh, I called out the defaults of this logger function because he showed just running it without any arguments, but I wanted to kind of call out that by default, it logs at the uh, info level. So that's the, um, like the, the it, debug is more specific than info and it won't show debugs by default. And then it uses this console appender by default. You can, this can be a list. So it sends to the console, you can say send to, the, to a file, you can write your own appenders that um, tell it where to put things. Uh, so anyway, so that's the default. And then it has these levels of info, warn, error, or debug that you can send messages. And when you do that, 
Um, so you send them to your log, which could, you know, could be writing to the console and saving to a file, for example. Uh, and as you do that, it'll show the, the messages. Um, I pulled this apart. Like if I, if you actually run this code, it's going to put the messages or the, you know, the things that are being output in between, but I wanted to separate out. This is the log that's being generated. Um, so that's the defaults. And that's really like as far as he showed in the chapter, he only shows the defaults, but he talks about some things that are related to the like deeper into it. And I wanted to play with that a little bit. So um, the first thing that is cool possibly is they, there are these layouts. So you can say there's JSON log layout and we're gonna look at another layout and there's a basic layout and there's a um, simple layout that doesn't even have the time stamps, different things like that. And in these layouts, so if we say JSON, that uses that format that he talks about in the chapter where you know, it creates JSON uh, or a JSON output. By default, it's gonna put whatever, if you only have one piece of text, it's gonna tag that as message. And then it has like level tagged as info, time tagged. So if you were going to be um, like feeding the logs into something like that you want, want them to be machine readable, this is pretty useful. And even more so because you can um, add structure to the logging. So instead of just having a message, you could have like different variables that you put in there. So I just threw in this my bar and it'll put that in to the JSON format um, or the JSON object that it outputs. Similarly, there's this other uh, log format, I assume is what log FMT stands for, log format, log layout, that it's another standard. Um, and it just does like a you know level equals info, TS equals the timestamp, message equals message, and my bar equals the, the number. Um, both of those, like, you know, the, the basic, um, the one that he showed is great for a log that you want to be human readable, but these are pretty cool. If you're doing something that you want to feed into some visualization or something that it can do these other formats. Um, anyway, so anyone have any questions, thoughts, comments on that? I'm assuming that this can then be thrown into the mix with something like glue, for example, right? Yes. Yeah. So you could use it for um, uh, like creating other types of error messages. And, and that's the other thing is these layouts, uh, again, you can define your own. I didn't dig into the code, but it's pretty simple. You know, it's just that it's sending all of this stuff into this function and then that function is just printing it. So uh, with something like glue, you could pretty easily make your own format uh, for whatever you might be doing. Um, I thought that was really cool because I I can imagine now like making a shiny app that is reading the logs of a different shiny app and displaying right. something, um, things like that. So it's, uh, oh, and that, that would be the other thing with the, um, appenders. So each appender has this layout argument. And so you could do in the file one, maybe you're doing this more JSON format, but in the console one, you do uh, the you know default um, human readable format, for mm -hmm. example. Um, you could do things like that. And that's pretty cool. Um, and you could make your own appender to like log it to a Google sheet or log it to a database or whatever you might right. want to do. Um, so yeah, that's uh, most of what he talks about really. Like he shows that shiny app that does this. Um, I, I, it's the same idea. He has it where it's um, he's passing the log around into the function so that it, it can do its own logging. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. And I, I don't know, this was useful for me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to totally add this to all the shiny apps that I do for R4DS. Um, because I've had times where something goes wrong, or or actually the worst was we have our mentor dashboard um, that 
uh, chose like unanswered questions. And if you were a new user, you couldn't log into it. There was something broken where like it wouldn't create the cookie and everyone thought it was just them and wasn't telling me. And so I didn't know that it wasn't working. They're like, oh, I'll figure it out later or whatever. And finally someone mentioned it. And so I cleared out my cookie and tried to log in. It was like, oh, I can't, I can't log in. It's broken. So it'd be nice to have something where it's showing me of, um, you know, whether people are logged in or not. If everyone who's coming to it mm -hmm. isn't seeing anything, um, isn't able to log in, that would be important to know. Um, different things like that. And actually, I think that's kind of a general thing about logging. Like he mentions, you want to know about it before someone else tells you about it, which is definitely, yeah. you know, totally agree. But also you want to know about it when someone might not tell you about it. <laughs> like, yeah, so many, yeah. like people will tolerate errors and think, oh, that's just how it is. Or, oh, my computer is doing something stupid or whatever. And it's like, no, it's, that's an error. That's not how things are supposed to work. So I think it's good to log, um, you know, and, and to have both the success and the error, because if you stop seeing success, then that can tell you something, even if you're not getting new errors. Um, yeah. So all of this, I, I don't, I do uh, human readable logging of things, but I had never really considered, uh, especially like shiny apps has uh, the, the shiny apps.io, they have a log file, like a logging system that it's just all the console output goes to uh, this log file. Adding something more systematic to that would be very useful because right now it's just a sea of uh, messages. And if you're yeah. designing, an, you know, if you're designing a shiny app, that's not meant for anyone to be running interactively normally. I mean, in the console, like you're, you don't care about the console messages. Uh, as a user, but I do as the person running the apps or uh, administering the app. So it's a very useful um, chapter, I think. But it, even though it's, you know, it's not that dense and, and I, you know, I submitted some comments to him and I really think you should dive more into Log4R. Yes, you can go through the package and learn about it, but um, show us all these things of here's how all the types of things that you might want to do in logging do this yeah. to a file and that to the console, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, any yeah. other comments? Yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, it's also very important for uh, provisioning and security to know where's, which one is logged in in what time. Right. And, yeah. And which one has the permissions to do what. So yeah, it could be very useful to, in the security. In much yeah. yeah. Or, or like to know, hey, something, you know, someone did something weird at this timestamp. Yes. Who was logged in when that happened? Or, you know, um, yeah, all that stuff uh, for sure. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to start. Uh, th this chapter uh, is going to have a big impact on a lot of the things I do, basically. But I'm immediately, like, I wrote a couple of tickets already around this. So, oh, I'm going to add this to all my stuff. Um, um, I have a question about that though. I think like I started logging in Python, like, you know, four or maybe five years ago and in Python, it's very, it's a very high priority to start logging. And I think mostly because at the time, um, people were still doing a lot more scripting than Jupyter notebooks, um, but generally, like people get introdu introduced, like I'm on, on the learning path, people get introduced to logging with Python really, really early. And I feel like logging in R is, is not even a thing until you're at advanced shiny, maybe. Um, but I also started to think about why that is. And I think, you know, he mentioned it in the chapter that most people are using literate programming right. to get around that. But as the more that he talked about log for r the more i realized that literate programming isn't really doing at all what <laughs> log for r is doing um so i don't really see them as, see it as much of a replacement um you know our our uh, notebooks and our quartos and all that yeah it's i think it's it's different like it's if you if what you're generating is like a report then 
like the report kind of is the log. Like there is, there's no, you're not aiming at repeated usage. No, something like a Shiny app or something like a Plumber API. That's the kind of thing where you do need logs because it's interactive, you know, and, and it can change mm -hmm. over time and all that. Um, or, you know, any, any other way that you're deploying some, uh, a model like the, the more literal, <laughs> like, you know, we've talked in other chapters about an email is deploy is production and it is a deployment, but it's a different kind of thing. Yeah. It's when you get into like repeated uses of the same code, I think. And I think a lot of people use R interactively and, you know, generate the thing and then they're done. And so like error messages in your console are your log. Yeah. So I think that's probably why it comes late, but it should be front and center in things like Shiny and Plumber. Like they should talk about how to build logs in because uh, like, I don't, I'm curious actually is, um, it's in full screen, so I can't see, let's see, can I, it didn't let me type, okay. So Mastering Shiny, I doubt he talks about, um, yeah, he doesn't have anything about logging as far as I know. Yeah, um, and this should, like, I, I think that's, I didn't realize it was missing because I also, um, you know, haven't been introduced to it at the right time or whatever. But I feel like it's missing. Like it's um, as you're learning these things, you should be learning to log. So I'm glad to have had this chapter for that, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I do think like it, part of it is because of the overlap that uh, if you're doing, if you're used to doing interactive work and you're putting good uh, error messages and warnings and uh, you know just messages to users, you get a lot of what a log would have and like by default shiny apps.io will tell you that a session is starting for example um, right. but it doesn't say what people do unless you make it you know unless you do that <laughs> so um i don't know it is it's it's definitely going to be interesting i think like and finding the right level you know you don't want to flood your log with useless information um, which is part of what this the de debug type of level is for is you can have it set up to output that stuff but not do so on, on production and then maybe when you're trying to figure out why something went wrong it, right. it's interesting because it's hard to figure out some why something went wrong if you don't know how things were set and so i'm a yep. little torn like he shows on his app oh i don't actually show what happened you know at this number level unless you turn that on and like then you wouldn't really be able to tell what happened you know like without having that info there yeah um well one one strategy we used um back in python was to just have your um like in python it's it's pretty similar like you set your logging object and you tell it the level and um as you're like developing the code, you do log dot debug for like pretty much every line and like where you would be like, it's sort of like a, a, a handoff between like writing unit tests and having the logger. Like if you're writing, if you write a little log dot debug and it's just like print what this thing is, um, then after that you go and you write a unit test for it. Um, and what was really useful for our application was that we could just say like you know somebody sent us a um you know an errored thing in the script and we'd be like okay like if we can rerun your data um give it to us and we'll give it a try and they would hand us the data and we would just say you know we go into the python slash site packages and we just change it and be like instead of log info change it to log debug and now right. all of those lines would just like start spitting out exactly what happened to that person at that time which is a, like a more rudimentary way than like setting it up with the automatic like you know prometheus and stuff but like yeah 
as an um, introductory way to do it. It was, <laughs> it was really helpful. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it is going to be interesting to find the right level. Like, you know, I definitely want to log who logged in, like whenever I'm, you know, when I'm adding these to shiny apps or to, to our apps that have logins on them, I probably not log like, you know, exactly. They selected this thing and then they deselected it or, you know, that kind of thing. But at a debug level, I would want that. Like, cause maybe yeah. there's some sort of state being remembered or something that is causing it to, um, yeah, it'll be interesting trying to find that right level. Um, all right. And then, so the only other thing that I have from this chapter is, oops, focus. I didn't go into the metric stuff that much because he didn't, uh, the monitoring, I guess. And I, it goes back and forth a little bit. I, I, I think he does. I know I'm going back and forth between metrics and monitoring. Um, that there are these tools. So there's Prometheus, uh, and then Grafana is a visualiz visualization system for Prometheus. And then there's this open metrics R package, which looked uh, interesting, but I haven't dug into it yet. Uh, Vetiver, I have played with that. Um, I haven't, uh, like we were starting to use Vetiver just as I left my last job, but um, it has stuff in it for model metrics. Um, and so, you know, he pushes that because, oh, and I guess it's not our studios, it's posits. Uh, model deployment framework now. Um, and, and yeah, I've got a note here that uh, we've got our what has changed meeting in January, and I'm hoping to revisit this section because I think that he didn't say very much. So I don't have much to say about it. And I'd like to see a little more of, I don't know, a little more suggestions of these are the kinds of things that you should be monitoring. Um, he gave us some hints of here's how you can monitor, but not, I don't know. I wanna see an example of using open metrics, for example, and what kinds of things he would put in that that are different than, you know, logs, different than event type stuff. So I don't have a lot to say here. Um, like I said, I've definitely done like CPU utilization and RAM usage and you know that kind of stuff all the stuff that's automatic on uh amazon web services um but seeing what else uh he would suggest i would like to see um and so you know if you're watching this alex i would like a little bit more in this section uh he has the question in there for us of you know would you like to see an example of this and at first i was like maybe just some screenshots since you're kind of sending us off to these other things but as I thought about it more, it's like, no, I, I'd like to see it. Like, uh, you say that open metrics can work for Plumber APIs, and now uh, they're adding it for Shiny. So, in your little Shiny app you made, what would you do metric wise that's different than what you're doing in logs? Um, so, yeah, like I say, I don't have a lot to say here because I feel like there's not much there yet. Um, and I would like to see more around it. Anyone else have any thoughts on the metric side of things? Have just you done anything? It, I was going to say just that it's probably going to come when we have to do some modeling. So since this <laughs> yes. is not about modeling, it's like I understand why you would sort of veer around it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I think it is, it can be pretty specific to what you're doing, like the types of metrics you want to keep are, you know, obviously that's why Vetiver has its own modeling or its own metric stuff, its own monitoring um, kind of workflow because it's for model metrics specifically versus um, like, I don't know. I don't know what kind of metrics I would want on uh the shiny dashboards other than again i guess uh shiny apps has some basic stuff built in and i don't know if i want more than that so i need to play a little bit with open metrics i haven't i, I like went to the website i've got it open in a tab here uh but i haven't 
dug in. I, I do like that they say it's an opinionated client. Like, so that generally means that they, you know, if I dug into this, it'll have, or dig into this, it'll have things of like suggestions on types of things to monitor very likely would be in here. So, but I haven't done that yet. Um, Okay, so running session count and reactive flush duration are what it does by default. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, so this looks a lot to me like um, a sentry, if anybody has seen that. Um, Sentry seems to be one of the de facto ones for like Python and JavaScript where, you know, you just sort of register it, you get an account, and then, you know, it just like dumps all of your logs there for you. Um, and then puts it on an endpoint like this, yeah. And then once you've like, if you're using, you know, containers and stuff, it registers every single time that and it can you know it can get very invasive where hmm. it can actually start to register every users every time a user actually uses this app it'll just like ping the endpoint and be like here's a person at ip address so and so and here's all the logs that they used so it won't like track your your uh your data and how you use the application but it will track the logs that you decided to inject into the application. Okay, right. Oops. Oops. Um yeah, all right. So that's that's the chapter. Oh, I I, I have a slide of review. So um I just threw our learning objectives back here to kind of talk about, you know, is there anything else that we want to cover? Basically, like did we cover all this? So uh, we talked a little bit about the difference difference between logging and um, monitoring and metrics. Um, I think I'm good there. <laughs> uh, we looked at the log for our package, and I that one I'm going to be diving into that package. I think so. I think there's a lot of useful stuff there, um, and there's not a lot. You know, it's um, like ten functions or something. Like it's not that complicated because it just has its set of things that it does. So um, I'll be using that for sure. And then, like like I said, didn't really go into the monitoring stuff that in much detail at all, just that there are these packages out there or these um, frameworks and packages. And depending on, you know, there's the uh, Prometheus and Grafana and et cetera. Um, and that's all I got. Uh, I think we might be done early today. Uh, if anyone has any other thoughts, I would, you know, I'd be glad to hear them. Um, otherwise, the only other thing, um, let me get rid of that one. Uh, Gus, yeah, you're signed up to present in two weeks about Docker. Um, yep. Is that all good? Okay. And yeah. we were <laughs> we were saying before you got here. I, 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 think was, I was a little worried it was next week, and then I realized I actually have two weeks, so it was a pretty happy moment. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's going to be, like, that's the chapter. That's that's one of the big ones. That's yeah, no, I'm a big really part excited. of why I'm reading this book is that chapter. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah next week, no meeting. Uh, we'll have the Project Club. Um, are you who is it this week is it or this i'm week? i'm presenting is that okay i thought so it's it's uh, actually it's the funny resume that you said that right. gus because i actually did panic yesterday too thinking that i was <laughs> doing the project club tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> so yes so next week we'll be uh seeing about building resumes in r i believe um that's right so cool because i've been uh doing some of that <laughs> so uh, but yeah, no meeting for this book club next week. Uh, then we have one meeting the week after that, take a couple weeks off. And then I'm going to lead the, 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 it'll be a discussion of just kind of walking through, looking at what has changed, which has been a lot. He's got, um, 
I didn't oh I should have pulled it up but there's uh at the end of every um every chapter now he has actual questions um which uh is nice and then he has this portfolio exercise section which I didn't go into because we haven't done the lead up to it um but yeah I want to go back I, I I do want to go back and do that where he has I don't know if it's in every chapter but in most chapters he'll walk through or not walk through, but like give you a thing, a project to go do. So in chapter three, there was an app that you build. Um, and then chapter four, it's take that app and add logging. Um, yeah. So. Which I, uh, I think is great. The, like, yeah. The, my, my biggest like thing that I wanted to get out of any of these books was to actually just like read something first and then go and do it. But if right. it tells me to do it, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like uh like i said this chapter i do have a lot to uh to do like i i, I have things that i want to add logging to and actually the last chapter i started to work on um there isn't an open source version uh or there isn't not open source but there isn't an equivalent to shiny apps for plumber where you can just where there's a free tier basically mm. um specifically for a plumber and so i'm trying to decide now okay I, I you know i've done uh aws things for work people speak pretty highly of google cloud platform but i haven't done anything there and apparently they have a or both of those have a pretty good free tier for the kinds of stuff i want to do where mm -hmm. it's not going to get hit much at all and so if you're if your api doesn't get hit then it's free basically if it's you know only getting hit a few times a week or whatever. Um, and I wanted to experiment with that on some of the R4DS uh, Shiny apps that everything right now is internal in the app, but take pieces of it and put them off onto Plumber APIs to do the actual com computation or whatever. I think that would be useful to do. And that's part of, you know, that's the project for chapter three is um, uh, do a, or loosely coupled app so you know separating pieces out um anyway so I, I like that he has these now i think they're in let's see is this chapter one yeah so chapter one has oh, a fantastic. blog yeah and chapter two has uh rm or them just down there so yeah he's doing that now um so we'll talk about that in january uh and we'll talk about oops um uh anything else that has changed i don't know what else it might have but i know a lot has and then i haven't I, I talked to him about this early on but i need to make sure he's still available that we'll have him come in and kind of talk about uh what we wish was there and all that kind of stuff i know he's very happy that we're reading the book he presented at the um our in government conference uh thursday and mentioned our book club and that everyone should come join. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I'll see uh, everyone, or at least some of you, uh, oops, next uh, Saturday, and everyone else the week after. So, bye. Cool. bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>